welcome to Cooking with Suburban Rider. I have a friend of mine named Chris. Chris stopped at his YouTube channel. He lives in the Netherlands. He is a chef and he has asked me to show him what pan fried okra is like. So I'm going to show you. I call this Arkansas pan fried okra. He'd never heard of pan fried okra before, so I promised him I would do a video. So here is what you start with. Very simple. You only need four basic ingredients besides the okra, obviously. Here is the okra I took out of the package. You want to start with frozen cut okra. That's the best way to start. Fresh okra is very difficult to uh, cook. So the frozen okra is the way to go. If you pick fresh okra, I would say cut it up. You can see it's in little chunks here, about maybe half an inch length. Cut it up in half inch lengths, the little pods that you get from the plants. Put it in a, a plastic bag and freeze it. That way it will cook a lot easier. So besides your okra, you need vegetable oil, cornmeal, salt, and flour. Now some people use self-rising flour or they even use self-rising cornmeal. I don't because I like the texture to be a little bit more crunchy rather than fluffy. But every one of these ingredients pretty much can, you can just vary it to taste. You can totally get rid of the flour if you want, totally get rid of the cornmeal you want. Um, some people, instead of waiting for the okra, I'm going to wait for the okra to thaw out just a little bit more so it starts to get slimy. And one way to help it along is while it's thawing out, just add a little bit of salt and then shake it around. And what will happen is the slime will come out on the okra and the coating will stick to it real easily. But what you could also do is take some egg white or take an egg and put it in a bowl and just use an egg coating and just get it sticky that way so that you can put your um, whatever you choose to use for a batter on it. But this is just the way I like to do it Arkansas style. So we're going to let this set, let it thaw a little bit, let the slime come out, and then we'll go on to the next step. Okay, it's been about an hour. I've got my pan with the oil in it preheating. You want to set your oil temperature just a little bit higher than what you cook eggs. I usually cook eggs at about four and a half, so I set this at a five. Um, they say a medium heat. I can't tell you the exact temperature, but the one way you can ruin the okra is if you get the temperature too low, because then it'll just draw in and soak up the oil. So make sure your oil is a nice hot frying temperature. I've got about a quarter of an inch on the pan here. If you start with that much, you'll sometimes in the middle of uh, cooking the okra, you'll have to add a little bit more oil which is fine. I would rather do that. Some people put about a half inch and almost deep fry it. Uh, I don't really prefer it that way, but like every, everything in this recipe, the amounts can vary, whatever it is your taste. And how you tell your okra is done. Now, you can kind of look at this, and I don't know if you can really see in the view that it's kind of shiny, but as soon as you stick your hand into it, you're going to be able to tell because you're going to feel the slime. It's very slimy, and that's what's going to help your batter to stick. So over here my batter is already ready. I just took a cup of flour and a cup of cornmeal, mixed them together dry. You can add salt to taste. Some people even add pepper. And you start taking handfuls of okra and just throwing it in there and mixing it around in the batter. The way my mom used to make it, she used to actually put it in a bag, but you know, and just shake it around in a bag, which will work too. But as you can see, it sticks to it nice, and I like it too because it doesn't overcoat it with batter. But what it's going to do is um, a lot of little pieces are going to break off, and you're going to have little crunchy pieces too, which I really like. And you do maybe like, I don't know, I'd, do, I'd say about maybe between a third and a half at a time. And then we'll throw it in and right away be able to tell if the oil is ready. Now some people cook it to where it's just done and tender. I like it kind of dark brown. As a matter of fact, some of the kids, when their parents fix okra down in Arkansas, they ask for burnt okra, and they're not joking with their mom's cooking style. They actually like it a little bit burnt on the edges, so calling it burnt okra is kind of a normal thing. Let's just take a little test in here and see. Yeah, it seems to be frying up pretty good, so if, it, if you hear it crackling like that, it's doing pretty good. Okra originally came from West Africa, and it's known as a cultigen, and it's, that means you will not find an okra plant in the wild. There is no such thing as a wild okra plant that is the same as this okra I'm cooking. Whatever the parent plant was, they uh, breeded the characteristics different when they cultivated okra, so that they could get whatever characteristics and flavorings they wanted. 
In the Caribbean, okra is called okro. And in parts of Louisiana and Texas, it's called gumbo along with the soup. It's the name of the soup, and they also call the okra itself gumbo. And I think more people, rather than fry it, actually use it for a soup thickener. And you can not only use the okra pods, but you can use the leaves of the okra plant for soup thickener, too. Because of the slime, a really good ingredient for soups and stews. The okra plant itself is very easy to grow. If you want to grow them in your garden, it couldn't be easier. It'll grow in poor soil. Um, very drought tolerant. As a matter of fact, I think okra always comes out best when you cook it after you've picked it in July or August when it's a little bit dry because then the flavor kind of concentrates in the okra pods. And you can plant it if you've got a part of your garden where the soil isn't really conditioned well. You can put it in a poor soil conditions and it will do just fine. It doesn't need good soil. I actually did some tests with okra seeds and extracting oil and found out that okra is one of the top plants for producing oil out of the seeds and may even be something they consider for biodiesel in the future. I'll put up a picture of an okra flower. It's a beautiful flower. The okra plant is related to the hibiscus plant and the flower is a beautiful butter yellow looking with a maroonish purple center. It's hard on some of the plants to see the flower though because with the leaves being so large and the way the flowers grow low on the plants I always thought that people would someday maybe grow an ornamental okra just because the flower is so pretty. And I'll put up a picture of the okra pods too. These pictures are from uh, Wikipedia. And you can see the pod here is rather small. You don't want to let the pods, if you're picking okra off of the plant, to use for eating or cooking. You can even eat them raw. As a matter of fact, last time I growed okra, I grew, growed okra, grew okra, uh, my grandkids didn't even end up uh, bringing any of the okra inside. They just picked it off the plant and ate it. But make sure the pods are about three inches and not much longer because it starts to get really tough and woody and stringy. It's not really any good to eat or cook after that. So you want the pods to be rather immature and short in length. So anyway, now it's just a matter of letting it cook a while. You do want to, after a while, when you start to see it turning brown, you want to stir it around so it doesn't just cook on one side or burn. So anyway, I'll pause it here and we'll get back to where it's almost done. Okay, at this point, you can see it's turned golden brown. This would be about the point, probably, if you've never had okra before, you would probably want to take it out about now. Now I look at I like it cooked just a little bit more than this, so I'm going to leave it in for about another five to ten minutes of cooking. But yeah, basically when you see golden brown on the outside, if you see any really bright green pieces, that just means they need to be flipped over. You're only cooking them on one side, so just flip them over and let them cook an additional five minutes or so. But for most people that have never tried it before, this would be the stage that you would take it out and. I would suggest to putting a little paper towel on the bottom to catch the grease runoff. It'll make it a little bit more appetizing too, unless you like your food just with a little bit more greasy taste. But I'm going to cook mine just a little bit more, and I'll show you how I usually eat it. Okay, now you can see I've cooked it a little bit longer, and it's got some quite dark brown spots going on around here. It's almost on the verge of what they call burnt okra. I don't quite make it to that point, but now it's about ready to be taken out. Okay, so here's the final product. This is what Arkansas pan-fried okra looks like. Let's take a taste test just to be sure. Oh yeah, absolutely perfect. Crunchy on the outside, tender on the inside. Probably just a little bit more salt, but that's all it needs right now. But I don't like to add a lot of extra salt because people are on low salt, salt diets, so I let everybody salt theirs to taste.